my goal, my mission statement, is to treat all neuromuscular pain and tension from very little to uh, devastating levels because you're addressing so many different levels of uh, involvement you use different methods for each level of involvement so everything from mild Swedish massage all the way up to very deep myofascial almost rolfing techniques a typical one let's let's take a whiplash where the the action of, of the person is usually uh, this way and then this way and then this way again okay with with the movement but much more violent than that and so the muscles all the muscles in the neck just tighten up to hold that uh, area afterwards and that's good it's just like when the EMT guys come in and put the, the brace on your neck to hold your neck uh, from moving around so much after you've had a neck injury well that's what the body does for you okay. so when it does this this is great and it it helps in the healing process but the trouble is is they tend to tighten too much so okay let's say we 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 uh, keep the neck stiff and then we lose all of our uh, normal movements instead of turning our head this way and looking at people okay we're gonna have to start doing this okay turning this way okay with our whole bodies and then that besides making uh, these muscles tighter and more set in their ways you're going to that the turning that you would do normally before now has to come from another part of the body. So it turns more than normal. Might not be used to turning that way. And so it's learning a new, whole new section and it might very well injure itself doing the new motion, taking up for the, for the motion that the neck used to do. And then you've got two problems. And then when that one tightens up, that area tightens up, guess what? You've got to go to another area to make up for the second area that tightened up, that made up for the first area that tightened up. So, you know, it's a, it's a downward spiral that we, that's so pathological. Because the muscle, again, is like an abused child. It's sitting there going, oh, when they're going to do it to me again? When, oh, no, I don't, I don't trust that move. I don't trust that move. And it overreacts on a, on a very, not on an intellectual level, but on a, on a cellular level. My rule in that process is, number one, to do whatever I can for that client when I'm with them at the time in the situation that they're in. And it's very uh, existential. It's uh, whatever they are that day, I need to work with them to help unwind them. Obviously, I work with the neuromuscular system. But they also get a lot of encouragement and not, uh, um, I shall say, unfounded, but, but hopefully uh, data-based encouragement from me, okay, and ways of helping them through their day. I don't give advice, to individual advice, but I do educate people about the situation in general. Okay, But the thing that really gets people out of uh, chronic pain is faith in some power, themselves, God, whatever the situation might be, and um, love, love for themselves, because a lot of people who are in pain think they deserve it for some ungodly reason and uh, love for the people around them and opening up to really what's happening. People who have chronic pain actually have to embrace it to a, a point, not try to avoid it at all costs because the pain is there to teach them something and unless they deal with it instead of running away from it, uh, it's very difficult to get through it. Some people are so sensitive and so scared of being intruded upon because by the time they see me, sometimes they have been pushed, prodded, stuck, stretched, all kinds of things by other folks, all with great intentions and, and it was wonderful skill, but their body has not accepted it very much. So my first job is to, is to primum non nocere, first do no harm, okay? So I get in and my, I may just touch them with finger weight pressure for the for as long as they can handle only finger weight pressure that's exactly what I'll do sometimes I don't I mean sometimes I've had clients who I haven't touched at all the first time they just talked through the whole visit but because they needed to tell me what was going on because they didn't trust me why should they everybody else has been you know hurting them for the last few months so why shouldn't I be the one but the next time they come in they're ready to go so you can't treat just muscles Muscles don't come into your room. A person comes into your room. And so you treat the whole situation 
the vehicle I use is neuromuscular therapy uh, to treat the whole person. As the client trusts me uh, and the, uh, uh, the neuromuscular areas uh, tend to um, relax more, then I can go into deeper and deeper levels of pressure and involvement uh, with the neuromuscular system. The big one nowadays is fibromyalgia, okay, which is a, a syndrome, not a, uh, a disease. It's a, it's a complex of, of different problems all uh, associated with each other. And um, the uh, evolution of, of the concept of fibromyalgia is still going on, so there's, it's not locked in stone exactly what it is. And, uh, and it, but it expresses itself in uh, hypersensitivity in some people, uh, to touch, uh, pain, or discomfort throughout the entire body, at, at, uh, any part of the body, okay. uh, fatigue, and of course, along, along with P, uh, fatigue, uh, Dr. Bonica, the uh, uh, grandfather of chronic pain, uh, said there is no pain without depression, there is no depression without pain. Okay. See, if I can get them to see a light at the end of the tunnel, and the therapy, some of the therapies I do, allow them to see that they're improved right now, at this time, right in the office, in within an hour, and but I I have them look at that because again people don't want to look at that for many reasons. One is they've been disappointed so much in the past that they don't want to be disappointed again. So they'll, they won't look at that they're getting improving, but they have to see they're improving because if they don't, the depression stays. And as the depression stays, then you have that whole spiral that brings you back into the pain cycle. In order to, if they trust me just a little bit, then I can get a neuromuscular change. If I can get a neuromuscular change, I, I show it to them. I say, see, now, how are you now? Well, I, I might be a little better. Well, I push on an area. Does that feel better than it did 10 minutes ago? Well, yeah, it does. And you go, fine. Then what does that mean to you? Okay, I'm a little better. Okay, and you have to hear it. And there's neurolinguistics involved in this too, where people who are in pain tend to perpetuate their pain by the types of, of, of songs they sing to themselves and, and re repetitive uh, tapes in their heads about their pain. And I can help them get out of those. Many times you use words like never and always and things like that. If they say, oh, I always hurt when I do this, well, then you can, anybody can say, well, you know, that might be true. But now you can think of it, up until now it's hurt, but it doesn't have to hurt after this if I do something about it. The more you run away from pain, the more energy you put into that, uh, number one, the less you deal with the pain and the cause of the pain, and also the more energy you put into denial and closing off, and that is a tightening in itself. That will cause tension, that will cause muscle tightening. So it's almost, it's, it's, par it's a real paradox because in order to get rid of the pain, you have to trust the pain and you have to be open to the pain to a certain extent. And how do you do that? You do that with, with pure, hardcore evidence that you're getting better and then not letting yourself forget that you're getting better, okay? Reminding yourself as much as you used to remind yourself that you're getting worse. You've got to start that positive energy back running the other way. So again, you've got to start that bank account of positivity back in. And we're not talking false uh, positivity. We're talking uh, good habits of, 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 you know, as much nutritional benefit as you can give to yourself, uh, rational exercise, uh, some type of connection to yourself, friends, God, whatever that support, psychological support system is you need. And then you're, you're good therapist. You, you don't hire people that don't work for you. If your doctor is mean and nasty and your therapist is mean and nasty, get rid of them. Hire, hire a good one. They're out there. And then once you've got your team that's working for you, you got your team, you got the things you're doing at home, psychologically and physically, help, hopefully that helps things turn around. Uh, but every day I have uh, great uh, experiences with people. Just... Helping anybody get out of pain. I mean, pain is absolutely no fun. It's, it's a corrosive, most of the time, corrosive to life quality and style and everything else. 
and uh, if that can help anybody get out of any kind of pain, uh, it just it just uh, is makes my day. It really does.